Hey guys, <clears throat> we are going to talk about nitroglycerin as our drug card for today. All right. Well, nitroglycerin is classified as a nitrate. He also call it nitrostat. All right. As a description, we can say that nitroglycerin is a rapid, smooth muscle relaxant that reduces peripheral vascular resistance, blood pressure, venous return, and cardiac workload. This, all in all, decreases the workload of the heart and decreases myocardial oxygen demand. And what does all that mean? Well, we want the heart to work less. In cases where the patient might be experiencing some chest pain related to cardiac. And that's the point. We're giving nitroglycerin um, on the auspice that we think the patient's chest pain is happening because of its cardiac in nature pain as opposed to a pleuratic type pain or a costochondritis type of pain. We're thinking that the patient has a cardiac issue going on and we're giving them nitroglycerin to cause vasodilation, to decrease workload and let the heart work a little easier. So this is a video because I'm going to talk about how nitroglycerin actually works. And if you're in paramedic school or you just kind of want a review of the basics behind hemodynamics, well, here you go. These are the basics behind hemodynamics, and this is what I like to call the blood pressure hierarchy chart. Now, blood pressure is generally the last vital sign to be affected in cases because we have compensatory mechanisms that prevent it from falling in different types of situations. So we can safely say that blood pressure is a uh, pretty much maintained and controlled by cardiac output and systemic vascular resistance, also called peripheral vascular resistance, not to be confused with pulmonary vascular resistance. So we all know cardiac output is the amount of blood ejected of the heart in one minute. Well, normal is about four to eight liters per minute. And we can say that cardiac output is a product of heart rate, and stroke volume. Stroke volume being the blood ejected out of the heart in each contraction. Let me see, contraction. Normal, depending on what book you read, is about 80 to 120 mLs per beat. All right. So if we take how fast the heart's beating, we times that by how much blood is coming out with each beat, we can get how much blood is coming out of the heart in each minute. Now, stroke volume is very dependent on preload and afterload. Now, nitroglycerin is a cool drug because once administered, it gets converted into nitric oxide by a whole bunch of different mechanisms um, that aren't really understood. It's kind of poorly understood how nitroglycerin gets converted to nitric oxide. There's a couple different theories, um, but regardless, it gets converted to nitric oxide, which is a very potent vasodilator. If we cause vasodilation, we're going to cause a decrease in systemic vascular resistance. The resistance that the left ventricle has to push blood out is going to decrease due to its direct vasodilation effects, which in turn is going to decrease my afterload. Now, nitroglycerin causes a little bit more venous dilation than arterial dilation, so the amount of blood being ejected or uh, being returned to the heart is going to be decreased as well. So, my preload is going to go down after giving nitroglycerin. Now, Normally, if my afterload were to go down because of a decrease in PVR, my preload would rise to try to combat that. But because nitric oxide is a is a inherent vasodilator, afterload goes down, preload is going down because of direct vasodilation effects, so my stroke volume is now going to go down. As far as heart rate, my heart rate is going to rise, which is why we have a transient rise in heart rate as a side effect when giving nitroglycerin. So after a while, this heart rate is going to rise. After a while, this is going to affect my cardiac output. And my cardiac output is going to go down. And because I already have this compensatory mechanism being affected by my decrease in SVR, my blood pressure starts to go down. And that is the chief side effect that we worry about when giving nitroglycerin is the decrease in blood pressure. So due to all the, to those effects is our basics behind hemodynamics here. All right. So when I'm giving my nitroglycerin, we can see the indication of it is chest pain associated with angina or an acute myocardial infarction. We can even give it for pulmonary edema as a first line treatment in our patients with congestive heart failure. When we talk about the contraindications of nitroglycerin, you're saying tolerance to nitrates, severe anemia, we don't want to give it. A big one is a head injured patient because we think of cerebral perfusion pressure 
in our head injured patients. If we could say the equation behind cerebral perfusion pressure is our mean arterial pressure minus intracranial pressure. Now if I have a head injured patient who's already have an elevated ICP and I have, I'm giving nitroglycerin which is dropping blood pressure which is going to decrease MAP, my cerebral perfusion pressure is going to go down and I definitely don't want to do that because I'm going to make my bleed worse. So we can say in this equation you can kind of see that the higher my ICP is, the lower my CPP is going to be. All right, so that's a very big thing. Don't give nitroglycerin to your suspected head injured patients. Um, people taking uh, erectile dysfunction drugs like your Viagra, Cialis, Levitra, you don't want to give it for the next 24 hours after administration of those types of drugs. They'll talk about giving Cialis. Um, if a patient takes Cialis, you don't want to give your nitroglycerin 48 hours. Um, after they take that drug because it has a little bit longer of a half-life. Right? Now, as side effects of your nitroglycerin, your patient might have a headache, sometimes very severe. Um, hypotension might happen. If hypotension does happen when giving your nitroglycerin, have a line and just give them a little bit of bolus of fluid. Give them a little bit of saline and you're going to play a seesaw effect. You're going to give your nitroglycerin, it's going to cause vasodilation. You would expect blood pressure to fall. That's okay. We can treat it. Give them a little bolus of saline, bump their pressure back up, and keep treating your patient. It's no big deal. You just don't want to bottom them out. <clears throat> In any types of cases where preload is already being affected, like a right-sided wall MI, which would be a topic for a later podcast. So when you're dosing it, um, this is pretty much really dependent on how you want to use your nitroglycerin. You can give it as a tablet, which is 0.4 milligrams or 400 micrograms. They have it in sublingual spray, which is the same dose. They have it in patches where you'd give one inch on the patch transdermally over the patient's heart. You can do it like that too. If you want to give your IV bolus or your IV drip infusion of nitroglycerin, that's what I like to do. All right. So we can say that IV nitroglycerin, we can call that tridil. All right. The half-life of nitroglycerin is about three to five minutes, which is why we give nitroglycerin every three to five minutes. So when we give nitroglycerin, we're going to cause a rise in therapeutic index. It's going to fall three to five minutes later. We're going to give another squirt. You're going to have a rise in therapeutic index. Give another squirt, rise in therapeutic index. And then you have this peaks and valleys. So you have an area of therapeutic level working, and then it's going to decrease three to five minutes later. Now, as opposed to if I were to hang a bag of Tridil, or a bottle of Tridil, however you want to say it, you would get this slow rising plateau effect. And then I would have a nice even therapeutic level of drug, which to me is a lot better. And you know that if you do take a patient with an active MI or something like that into the hospital, you know the first thing, one of the first things the doctor's going to do is hang Tridil. All right. We hang Tridil. They have a dose of about two to 200 mics per minute. Um, as medics, we generally tend to start at 10 mics a minute. <clears throat> um, but my all-time mentor when it comes to this critical care stuff, Scott Weingart, is always saying that, you know, um, in order for Tridel and actually to be therapeutic, you need to start at high doses, almost at 100 mics per minute. But again, that's completely do or, uh, department dependent. <clears throat> so... That is pretty much Trido. We went over the side effects, contraindications of it, uh, description, class. Love your nitro, love your Trido, and learn your hemodynamics. See ya.